The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the P Power Trading Hour, with your host, David White. Now, the author of The Path of Least Resistance and the Tech Insider, David White. And it is a beautiful Friday, April 27th, and it is the, uh, what do we got going on in the background here? Got a little bit of music. Oh, we've got a little bit of Morse code. What's going on out there? Uh, it is uh, Morse code day. Every year they uh, celebrate Morse code in uh, the invention of Morse code, kind of a... a Finley Morse was uh, kind of a sh shameless self-promoter, a uh, good businessman, and uh, Alfred Vail is probably credited for actually 80% of Morse code, um, but uh, nonetheless, everybody calls it Morse code. He uh, fought in uh, court for about 10 years to get it renamed Morse code uh, so he could uh, go with his business, uh, and uh, eventually Alfred Vail settled, I guess, out of court. Uh, not to be remembered every day. Everybody knows uh, Morse code, but uh, not Alfred Vail. Sometimes history re forgets those that uh, actually made a fairly significant uh, input to uh, our technology out here. Uh, kind of the Internet of its time, actually. Uh, I think the, uh, as far as teletypewriters, I think it was 96, maybe it was a little after that, maybe it was 98, uh, the last uh, actual uh, uh, teletype was used for sending a message. Uh, after that, they went straight to the Internet. Uh, so for the last 10 years or so, really uh, or more than that, uh, Morse code really not used anymore. In fact, uh, uh, ham radio operators, amateur operators, I think within the last couple of years, don't even have to uh, take a Morse, uh, Morse code test anymore. Uh, it's a lot more about uh, computers and a lot less about radio. Uh, but uh, very interesting to see that uh, kind of the Internet of its time uh, was uh, well, kind of uh, setting up uh, almost uh, 210 years ago or 200 years ago or so. Uh, movers out here today, Expedia, uh, it was up uh, earlier at 28%. Uh, it's going nuts after it announced very high price, uh, price uh, profits from hotel bookings up uh, nearly 30%. So we've got some people out there traveling, actually staying in some hotels. Uh, their new uh, form of uh, get your price at any time seems to be uh, very uh, uh, profitable. Uh, and uh, even though uh, William Shatner went off the uh, cliff in a school bus, uh, doesn't look like it's going to be a bad deal. Cray, Cray's up 21%. Someone was actually uh, bringing this up about uh, uh, the other day in their news. And uh, uh, this is the highest the stock has been in two and a half years as the computer company destroyed estimates and raised our sales outlooks for the year. Amazon.com, of course, up uh, about 15% with improved profit margins. Uh, Amazon has surged nearly 15% today. Uh, Amazon per, uh, performance has been the story of Wall Street today. Uh, and uh, very interesting. Uh, Decker's at door was down about 25% with earnings that were uh, underestimates. Uh, apparently, uh, no one was buying those Uggs Why the weather was so nice and warm uh, over the winter time and uh, uh, the, even before uh, they were hit on higher costs than the last earnings uh, because the cost of wool and sheep skin going up dramatically. So uh, just about everything uh, uh, going against Deckers that uh, could. Um, yeah, they were down about 15% after hours and down oh, 25, 26% today. Uh, Tesso Technologies was down about 20%. Uh, they're going to lose a big part of their business with their latest customer. Uh, which is actually concerned investors. Uh, I don't know why they'd be concerned. Their biggest customer leaves them, and they're gone. So that's kind of it. Uh, one of the interesting things is we've been watching the market move up here higher and higher on lighter volume. Uh, one of the things that uh, one of the uh, uh, theories that has been espoused over the last few weeks is by uh, Robert Capato, 
He's the uh, Black, Rock, uh, Black Rock president and director. Um, and he's basically saying that a lot of the volume coming out of this marketplace is because of share buybacks. Uh, $300 billion uh, last year was coming out of the stock market uh, because of share buybacks. Uh, normally in the past, uh, share buybacks have been just a threat. Uh, but apparently, over the last year, uh, companies have actually been buying a lot of shares. Uh, the cynical view is they're holding it up so that they can get uh, better uh, uh, profit on their own uh, options uh, that they get for working at the company. So the CEO and F uh, CFO and all those guys want to uh, keep the price high. Uh, but uh, that number actually includes all the money that has gone out, actually, on IPOs. So, uh, you know, the number could be much higher. Uh, I didn't get the exact number, but he said net net for money going in and out of shares uh, compared to it, uh, $300 billion uh, in buybacks by corporations over uh, in 2012. So maybe uh, just a whole lack of shares means uh, less trading out there, less, uh, less seats at the musical chair. Uh, interesting theory. We'll have to see how that plays out. Uh, what else do we have going on out here? Uh, Groupon's CEO. Uh, haven't real been a real fan of Groupon. Uh, Andrew Mason, kind of a slimy guy. He's walked out on a few uh, previous IPOs with lots of cash, leaving uh, his investors high and dry. Uh, one of the reasons I'll be extremely worried about Groupon. Uh, he was out at a... a uh, uh, deal this week, and he explains that Groupon has been behaving inappropriately. We're still this toddler in a grown man's body in many ways, he said, before going on to admit that recent financial issues at Groupon were the latest in a string of us just making an example of how bad we are at being a public company. We have to get good at this. If the companies succeed, it must slow down, focus on fewer initiatives, including on quality and control, and not taking stupid risks. Uh, I don't know. It just seems to me kind of stating the obvious, but uh, that is uh, that is me. So uh, we all have to uh, take a look at that when that comes back. But uh, I don't know. Uh, everything this guy touches or does, uh, this kind of seems to uh, get a little bit on me. I, I just don't like it. Uh, free markets, uh, thanks to a little digging by the staff of uh, Jim Inhofe uh, from Oklahoma, uh, attention has been brought to a 2010 video that the EPA is at war with the oil and gas industries. Al Armendariz, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it actually, gives a strategy used to intimidate the companies involved. Uh, a lot of been made about this on talk radio probably over the last couple of days. Uh, probably the most important thing is that uh, right after this video was made, uh, a lot of companies uh, in the uh, Pennsylvania area were uh, taken to the woodshed by the EPA over fracking. Uh, they actually sued them and chased them around the block a few times, only to find out that a few weeks ago all those lawsuits had to be dropped because guess what? There was zero, zero scientific data supporting the fact that uh, fracking actually did cause problems with uh, water down in Texas. That was the claim. Uh, basically, uh, it was a claim. There was no truth to it. They had to drop it. And uh, many of those companies are looking now at uh, actually uh, suing the EPA for just out and out a lying. Um, there was a, a fairly famous, uh, or semi-famous, as much as they can be, documentary about fracking that came out several years ago. Uh, in the movie, they actually said, well, fracking caused the water to actually catch fire. Uh, well, apparently that was also a lie. Uh, and uh, well, about five years previous, the water had been uh, uh, actually catching fire, actual methane gas coming through the water supply. Uh, for five years previous to any fracking at whatsoever and any drilling. Um, the markets are not really free. The government's always involved in a little bit. Today we actually found out that uh, they're hiring a hired gun to come after Google on antitrust uh, uh, stuff. It, it just, you know, it, if it was true, I wouldn't have any problem with it. But now that we know that they just lie, uh, that uh, they are willing to use... Uh, uh, basically anything uh, to get their ends because the ends justify the means. Um, 
But uh, when tell, people tell me that the oil market's free market, uh, it's probably one of the least free markets that are out there. Governments push it around. Uh, oil uh, cartels push the price. Um, they won't let you, uh, you know, with a million and a half or 1.2 million, million miles of uh, pipeline, suddenly uh, it's a big deal to add, add one more pipeline in America. Uh, it's, you know... It's going to get an awful hard to convince me that uh, uh, the government isn't really just trying to hold us back somewhat. But uh, I don't know. Check those videos out. Uh, pretty compelling evidence uh, that uh, they're willing to do whatever it takes to uh, uh, get what they believe in, whether or not it has anything to do with the truth. Uh, Samsung says, wake up. Samsung said uh, protesters pulled up next to a store in a black bus and poured out chanting, wake up. Uh, there is a, uh, that was actually in Australia. Uh, Samsung is uh, kind of having these little mini riots uh, in front of Apple stores. Kind of an interesting market claim. Uh, but they have their next big uh, product coming out on May 3rd. They have a website uh, counting down to May 3rd. Uh, Samsung also uh, became the largest manufacturer of uh, cell phones, uh, displacing Nokia this week. Uh, when the, all the uh, data came out from their earnings. So uh, eh, kind of interesting out there. Samsung uh, dwarfs everyone else in the amount of units anyway, not in the amount of money being made. That's, of course, Apple. Uh, the Galaxy S3 is rumored to have a quad-core processor, ceramic body, uh, body and a 4.8-inch screen that can play full 1080p HD video. So... Uh, I want to be looking at that one. That's kind of exactly what I'm looking for. Nice big screen, play real video, uh, and a nice quad-core processor. Sounds pretty sweet. Uh, but uh, May 3rd on that. Uh, Square announced yesterday it's processing payments at $5 billion a year. Uh, that's kind of interesting because just a month ago it was $4 billion a year. Uh, Square is an online uh, bill paying and uh, kind of credit card uh, processor. Uh, they're probably looked at as one of the few companies that's going to, to uh, be able to go public within the next year. So you might want to keep an eye on them, find out a little bit more about them, know uh, a little bit more about them before they come public. Square is currently used for about a million people to process transactions, a fraction of the potential market uh, for online uh, paying and paying by cell phones and swiping cell phones over the uh, uh, little readers uh, so you don't have to get your credit card out. Uh, one bad thing, and that is that they uh, continue to operate at a loss, although their losses have gotten a whole lot less. Uh, you know, just about over the last month, they've gone from 39% loss to a 31% loss. Um, maybe as they scale up, they can actually make money. Uh, but that's what it will take to get them to go public. Anyway, you all have a... Uh, Great little break here. We'll be back in about three minutes. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your the Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume and the major stock indices tell him when to be at the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakouts gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks.
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of the money game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You were born to be a money master, and I'll teach you how. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we continue on, having a little bit of a discussion about uh, fracking in the den here, but uh, we'll continue going on. Uh, the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act uh, was passed in the House uh, it is technically an amendment to the National Security Act of 1947. Uh, the CISPA would permit any private company, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, uh, Pinterest, Google, you name it, to give away any and all data that's collected on you whenever you wanted to uh, by the government without a search warrant. Uh, actually, uh, there's been a lot of lawsuits where they have given data out to uh, uh uh, what do they have? Uh, I mean, they've been sued because they've given data out, even with search warrants and some other stuff. So a lot of these companies would just like uh, any, it to go away. Uh, so they're kind of pushing for it. Uh, the government, of course, uh, would love to have it on it. The problem with this law is it's based on very vague terms. Uh, it has almost no oversight. It has those powerful backers that uh, wish that they wouldn't be sued anymore. Uh, the only thing is the president said he will veto it. Uh, I hope he was, uh, will, but uh, sometimes uh, presidents go back on the word. We need to make sure that uh, if you are talking, 
uh, to any of your representatives. You probably sp uh, speak up and say that CISPA is uh, something you don't like, and maybe research it a little bit more, but uh, CISPA is something that's uh, pretty horrible. Uh, it's on the heels of all the other stuff that they couldn't get past before, uh, but keep an eye on it. This stuff is uh, even worse than uh, uh, all the uh, other stuff that they were trying to push uh, not a month ago. Um, you can only hope that it gets gummed up in this election cycle and they don't do something incredibly stupid. And the president decides to renege on his promise to actually veto it, and they continue to pass it. And then he goes, well, okay, I'll, I'll sign it anyway. Uh, you have to worry about those kind of things. But uh, another attempt to uh, go after all these, and uh, my guess is that it would actually hurt the companies that think it would help. Uh, but uh, that's pretty much it. We're going to get to uh, some stocks here pretty quick. Uh, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, yeah. 877-927-6648. That's it. Uh, we've got about three minutes here before the break. Uh, we're going to get into some charts uh, and then maybe some discussion. See if I can actually find my charts here and load them. Yeah, we've got them. Uh, there's a few that are out here that are really uh, starting to be very interesting. Uh, the market itself uh, kind of... Uh, yeah, you've got to be worrying about it. The volume has been a very light, 2.6 billion shares right now. Uh, that means that we're probably going to come in uh, about 3.1 billion shares uh, at these highs. I still want the uh, market to pull back. I am bullish, uh, but I want the market to pull back to make the risk reward a little bit better. We got close at uh, 1365. I suspect that maybe through May we get down to 1345 or something like that. Everybody will be declaring the end of the world. Uh, and, uh, you know, it'll probably be a great time to have a summer rally. Um, but uh, just uh, volume's just a little light in here. Of course, it is Friday. You'd love for the market just to pull back a little bit on this uh, late day and then uh, start to rally. We do have uh, Basically, uh, uh, fund buying starting uh, today a little bit, uh, and then uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, uh, and maybe even the end of Thursday, depending on who you believe about uh, when funds buy. But pretty much all that money is going to be in by the 3rd of May. Uh, and the question is, uh, will it be a sell in May and go away year? Uh, volume is not very uh, high out here, but it is a Friday. Uh, if we don't have volume come in by probably Monday or Tuesday, uh, this will be a little bit dubious, uh, to say the most. Uh, we've got a lot of stocks moving out there. The first one was Ambev I wanted to get into. Um, Ambev is one of the few that actually hit uh, a higher high on, uh, and actually pulled back into the trading range, but it did have higher volume. Uh, some of these are the ones I'm watching to see whether they do break out or not. Not that I would particularly buy Ambev, although I'm probably not a bad company out there. Uh, the previous high was at March 27th, $44.48, 2.8 million shares. We hit the high of April 20th on... Uh, uh, $44.63, and I see Steve Rhodes getting ready to uh, get in his vehicle and meander on home once again for a long weekend. You all have a great uh, time, Steve, as he gets uh, get ready to get in the elevator. Just saw him in the green room. Uh, but, uh, you know, kind of got a lot of volume today. I can imagine that this goes back up to those highs, but uh, certainly got to watch it, uh, you know, within... Uh, uh, a buck or two of the highs out here, but uh, certainly you uh, don't want to uh, be short this thing with a high volume high out here, certainly higher than the uh, previous high. But one more test on light volume would uh, maybe get you a little bit uh, too, uh, maybe bearish on it. Anyway, we'll be back and look at some more stocks. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a 
a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've always thought about trying out his newsletter, Market Insights. Well, now is the perfect time. For a limited time only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. If you decide to cancel within the two-week trial period, pay absolutely nothing and keep Tom's book as a free gift from us. Tom sends out his daily newsletter each morning by 9.30 a.m. with trade recommendations including price targets and price stops. As recently as March 21st, Market Insight subscribers closed out a position for more than a 25% profit in just over two weeks. To get your two-week free trial to Market Insights, along with your free copy of The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Supplies are limited for this one-of-a-kind special, so act today and don't let this opportunity pass you by. Offer only valid for new subscribers. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And it is a beautiful day out there, and we've got somebody on the line. It's Doug from Atlanta. How are you doing today, Doug? I'm doing fine. So, dude. Go ahead. Yeah, I can, I can hear you, but I guess you can't hear me. No, I can hear you. Go okay. ahead. Uh, I was curious about the, the action in Maxwell today. I wonder if uh, you had any thoughts on it. Uh, disbelief. <laughs> uh, kind of very interesting that uh, they were expecting a contract. Uh, basically, they said that they were getting a contract. And uh, in the earnings call last night, they said that they weren't getting the contract. So basically, you know, the idea was that they were going to be having a uh, contract with a large manufacturer of uh, cars, uh, especially in the uh, uh, hybrid part of the marketplace. And uh, basically, there was a uh, great short position put on in the last few days. And uh, as soon as the word came out, the 
stock was off a little bit. Uh, somebody came in and dropped a huge amount of shares at the very uh, open to get it down to uh, about 11 bucks or so uh, and uh, pressured the stock pretty much the rest of the day. So a uh, combination of a little bit of earnings miss and a huge amount of bear raid. So uh, it is a uh, Maxwell. MXWL. Uh, pretty good stock. Uh, one company actually did a downgrade on it and dropped their profit percentage uh, from 44% to 22%, although uh, nothing in uh, their forecast said it would be that drastic. So uh, you have a little bit of uh, a couple things piling on. Uh, it did uh, technically break the stock. I suspect it's going to get back up to about 1450 uh, based on uh, just the uh, financials over time. But uh, probably going to take a little while to get back up there. And uh, uh, because of the destruction today, it's probably going to uh, keep that stock in a uh, somewhere around, uh, I don't know, 10 buck to 1450 uh, range probably for, I would imagine, the next year. Do you think it's going to go down and test the lows again? And by lows, I mean like the five dollar area. Oh no, no, no! I think uh, from unless something quickly deteriorates beyond what they've said, uh, and I think you're going to know that really quick. They've got their uh, they've got their uh, uh, stockholder meeting on the 9th of May, and I suspect we probably get a lot of. Uh, Wonderful uh, news out from the company between now and then, so he didn't get a lot of rocks thrown at him. The CEO I'm talking about. Right, right. So I, I suspect that you've got, you know, just I, when I checked earlier on it from a from Bloomberg, it was uh, it looked like they have a thing where they'll actually give you uh, what they estimate the uh, short interest is. You don't have to wait every two weeks. And it, it's approaching like 50%. So there's a huge amount of people that have to cover uh, the stock. And right now, uh, they've got a huge amount of money where they can dump on it. Uh, but there's enough institutional owners out there uh, that will push this thing back up uh, and then start uh, distributing the stock. So if you're in it, uh, go ahead and uh, probably take a little bit more ride back up into that $14 area and then get out of it and get out of it for good. Okay. So Thank you very much. Everybody has a little bit of rain must fall. I've got some stocks doing really well and one that did really poorly really quickly. So anything else? Uh, triple Ds. Well, what can you say? I'm thinking that it's a little bit overextended at this point. It's been growing a little bit fast. But uh, I don't know. Your thoughts? Uh, when you're in a bull market, stand back and let it run. Sell your losers uh, and let your winners run. So I mean it's uh I mean these are the kind of stocks that just continue to run forever. Uh right. once they get they've got it's got the right story. Uh it's got the right kind of earnings underneath it and uh they've done literally everything as correct as someone as Microsoft or Apple and their iPods and their iPhones have done. So the the question is, you know, do you get a little bit of pullback? Uh you could. Uh, this depends on whether or not you're planning on uh, trading it or investing in it. Okay. But, uh, I mean, there's, uh, uh, you know, certainly in 3D printing, I'm going to say that there is a confirmed bull market in it. All right. I appreciate your input. Thank you very much. That was Doug in Atlanta. Now we're going to go back to a, a few other stocks. And uh, what do we have here? Analog devices, uh, we've been talking about it kind of showing a nice uh, level of support, uh, kind of popping the last couple of days. Um, there was a, a good uh, area of support uh, around, uh, what is that, uh, $37 uh, uh, it's gone, you know, in that uh, gap up, uh, it uh, jumped that, uh, basically jumped the creek there on about uh, 7 million shares, 7.3. Uh, it's come into it once at 3.5 million shares. It's come into it uh, just on April 23rd at uh, 2.7. Uh, we've had it pull up here just a few days, uh, but on very light volume last two days. Um, you think that this thing could pull back to about 37.50 without any problems, but it looks like a lot of these are setting up some kind of basing pattern. We uh, That's why I'm hoping we get this little pullback back into uh, 1346, 1343 area on the S&P. Uh, 
and uh, start finding out whether or not um, you know these things are going to continue on. I wanted to check the volume once again here and uh, just see how light it's going to be into the close uh, as we have what about 20 minutes left. Uh, just a hair under 2.8 billion shares on the consolidated New York Stock Exchange. Uh, normally, you know, we're looking at big signals at 6 billion, maybe 5.5 billion. Uh, we've had a uh, very light volume through all of this. So uh, kind of interesting. Uh, next one uh, that uh, is interesting to me is Aon Corporation. Symbol is A-O-N. And again, you can give me a call, 877-927-6648. Uh, and that's going to be uh, the uh, October 27th high, $51.11, 3.4 million shares. I've uh, been tapping this. Uh, Aon Corporation, um, we'll get uh, what they do here. Uh, rats. Um, Aon Corporation provides risk management services, insurance, and reinsurance brokerage and human resource consulting and out. Uh, sourcing consultants primarily in the United States, the Americas, the United Kingdom, and Europe. Uh, risk management solutions for basically insurance, underwriting management. Um, this looks very interesting. Uh, coming in, um, you know, it's got a fairly decent volume pattern out here, but it is uh, it, over these highs. Uh, what did it have here? Uh, about a buck over the uh, previous high, and the volume did not come in. 3.4 million shares, uh, and you had 2.5 million shares out there. Energy was kind of lackluster on this way up. Um, you know, you had a couple of days with some decent volume. Uh, today we're getting some kind of light volume. Normally, I want to give this three days for volume to come in. Uh, if it doesn't close below the previous swing high, or if the volume uh, continues to be low for three days, uh, that's a pretty decent sell signal. And at some point, you have to see how it comes back into that trading range and whether or not uh, it actually uh, is uh, doing what we're looking for. Um, I'm going to go to just a little longer uh, chart. Uh, you could also make a claim that it's going after uh, the previous July 7th high at 1.4 million shares. Um, and uh, but uh, we haven't quite tested that, so it's got about another 20 cents. So you got uh, basically two highs to look off at at that. Uh, but uh, you know, very uh, looking at this volume today, uh, it is pulling back on lighter volume. So probably going to see that test on Monday, Tuesday, something like that. Uh, another good one to see how the rest of this market's going to actually perform as we come out here. Uh, we've been talking uh, probably for about two, three weeks about uh, gold and uh, gold prices uh, uh, getting close to uh, hitting some kind of bottom. And it kind of looks like uh, gold has actually uh, found a decent uh, low. Uh, let's see what we have here. It's up three bucks today, uh, 16, 63, 70. Um, just because it's made a low doesn't mean it's going up, though. Seems to be a rather. Uh, Decent support and decent resistance in a very narrow trading range here. Uh, my guess is it's going to build up some steam and bust out one way or the other. So I'll probably sit to the side until I get some better signal on here. Uh, but uh, it'll be very interesting. Uh, dollar index is off uh, 18 cents today, $87.81. Uh, and as we get into some of these gold stocks, they certainly look like uh, they're putting in some rather decent lows on light volume, at least at the moment. Uh, energy down was probably a little bit more than you would like to, to see in a lot of these stocks. Uh, in uh, Alexo Resources uh, Corporation, uh, just make sure this is a gold stock. I think it is. XU. Uh, Mineral Properties Canada, primarily Yukon Territory, principally owns uh, da, 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 uh, silver, lead, zinc, yeah, gold. Okay, uh, I just want to make sure. Uh, the low of October 4th had uh, 850,000 shares at $5.73. Uh, we got within about a dime of that, but the volume was about half. A lot of times, uh, if you get into a candle, you won't go test a, a high volume low. If you get less than 50% volume, and you certainly have that, uh, we've had a nice little bounce. My guess is this could still come back and uh, maybe bounce off that uh, $5.73 level again today, just on the extremely light volume off this um, 
Well, last couple of movements out here. He had a little volume uh, in a doji on uh, the 25th, uh, but uh, still seeing a lot of these gold stocks hang out at uh, levels that uh, you would think have taken off a little bit longer if gold was going to the high side. Crown Castle International, CCI, uh, and uh, is another one of these. Uh, nice little doji uh, and uh, on very light volume. It's up against fairly strict uh, Stiff resistance. Uh, what we were looking at is the $55.99 high on March 12th. Uh, symbol is CCI. If you're not watching Tiger TV, tisk tisk. If you aren't, $55.99, 9.5 million shares, uh, and $57.78 on uh, the 26th or yesterday, 2.5 million. So basically up against highs. Uh, Crown Castle International, CCI. Uh, they are a uh, operates and lease shared wireless infrastructure primarily in the United States, Puerto Rico, uh, like cell towers, stuff like that, rooftops, uh, distributed antenna systems. So uh, going to be kind of interesting, but uh, nice move off these lows, up about uh, what 15 percent off the last major low uh, of March 16th. Um, it's got a nice little gap down there below, but I uh, uh, could see this thing uh, winding up with a uh, about $6 trading range off its last major uh, move out here. Uh, what else do we have? EQT, what's that one? Uh, EQT Corporation, uh, and that is uh, symbol is EQT. Uh, another one that's kind of made kind of these low volume lows out here. Uh, find out about it. Uh, just so I can tell you correctly, and uh, I hate this. I accidentally clicked in the wrong spot. Uh, uh, operates an integrated energy company in the United States. Operates three segments, uh, uh, production, midstream, and distribution. Uh, gauge the exploration, uh, development, and production of natural gas. So it is one of those natural gas plays. I know natural gas was up a little bit. What do we have here? Uh, I don't have a symbol for it here today. Uh, UNG, though, is up uh, 40 cents. Not too bad. Uh, we'll have to take a look and see uh, what we have. But my symbol isn't updated on natural gas on the Bloomberg today. I see. But anyway, uh, kind of a nice vo uh, bottom out here, certainly on 50 percent lighter volume. Uh, we've been trying to move off this. Uh, I'd like to see one more uh, tip back down to about 46.05. Uh, and uh, continue to see kind of light volume. Had some decent volume yesterday, very light volume today. Uh, but maybe we're starting to see some of the consolidation out of some of these natural gas stocks. And I suspect we're probably going to see these things basing out uh, into probably late summer until the uh, contracts are set up for uh, natural gas uh, energy production, uh, electricity production, uh, and then start to see those uh, actually move in that favor. Uh, EXK, Endeavor Silver, we've been watching this one on the show for a few days because it came in fairly light. Uh, but again, uh, just because it's made a bottom doesn't mean it's going up. Uh, it can go sideways for a while. And uh, we're seeing some fairly light volume in these bounces on these, uh, which uh, puts a little bit of pause into uh, what we're looking at. Um, do see... Uh, if you're watching at home here on, or on Tiger TV, uh, it's got into uh, these candles of October 4th, 5th. Uh, it had a nice reversal back there, but 3.8 million shares uh, got into as low as $8.05, about halfway through that candle, but about a fourth of the volume, uh, which pretty good indication that you're setting up some kind of basic low, um, 770,000 shares on April 24th uh, for the low of 8.05. So uh, we continue to see these things uh, banging out lows uh, and trying to break lows. Uh, kind of interesting. Anyway, we'll be back. We've got about seven minutes. Uh, please give me a call, 877-927-6648. Uh, we'll continue to watch these uh, stocks and close and the volume here before the end of the day. And then uh, in about 15 minutes, Tom O'Brien. We'll be back in just a minute.
Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when temporary market spikes move against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the advantage of keeping your trades open even when the market temporarily spikes against you. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique short-term binary options that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakouts gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we pay you more for converting your jewelry to cash. Let's go to uh, Brian in New Jersey. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Hey, Tom, I uh, just want to let you know I did uh, give you some jewelry. Uh, my jeweler offered me uh, about $650. I should get a check in the mail tomorrow for about 1200 At Tiger Metal Exchange, it's all about honesty when converting your jewelry to cash. Okay, let's go to Paul in Florida first. Hey, Paul, what's going uh, on? I want to commend you on the Tiger Metal Exchange. I just did a deal with you guys the other day. Oh, good. I'm yeah, very happy. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Now, yeah. did you sell us jewelry or did you buy coins off us? Yeah, I sold you jewelry. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. What we weighed of that was less than you guys said, so, you know, you're totally honest. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we give you the tools to value your gold, and it's absolutely free. Call 866-618-8888 or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. We've created the easiest, safest, and most honest cash for gold process. Tiger Metal Exchange. It's the only call you need to make. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your the Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it just, it's just wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, yeah, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator. Also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we come back, uh, looking at this volume here, uh, seeing if we're going to have kind of a nice close uh, did get a little volume in the last uh, 10 minutes, uh, just a hair over 3 billion shares. Uh, actually, you know, for a Friday, it probably wouldn't be so bad if we had a little bit uh, uh, more uh, going on out here. Uh, yes, I uh, can't remember who in the den brought up Cray the other day, but I should have probably taken a little bit better look at it. Why don't we uh, go pop into that one? I met old man Cray 
at one time. He's long uh, past due, uh, but uh, uh, actually, eh, yeah, uh, let's see, eh, hang on, we got a little internet problem, hang on for just a second. If we can bring up the volume here. Well, I can't bring up the chart for right now for some reason. I'm not exactly sure. I wanted to get back to uh, yeah, having internet. Internet problems all over the place. Uh, see if I can't just uh, restart my uh, internet system here real quick and see whether or not that solves my issue. But uh, we'll have it there. See yeah. uh, Anyway, uh, they were selling uh, a lot of what they had working out there, but uh, uh, somebody did bring it up in the den the other day when it popped, the first pop, uh, having a nice uh, move out of here today. Anyway, they make supercomputers. Now, they sold off a lot of their stuff to another company. And my initial reaction was uh, that uh, they were uh, selling off kind of their seed corn. Uh, Cray is probably, uh, he was one of the geniuses that really had one of the wonderful uh, supercomputers. Uh, was a very interesting uh, guy, uh, kind of a, a nut, uh, but uh, a brilliant nut, uh, and uh, it was kind of interesting. I actually sat on the uh, at uh, the IRS on one of his computers uh, in about 1986, and uh, these uh, things were cooled by uh, liquid nitrogen, uh, and uh, the IRS had just bought two of them, uh, each at uh, $500,000 a piece. And uh, forgot to hook up the uh, cooling to one of them and instantly fried it. And uh, us as taxpayers got to pay another $500,000. Uh, anyway, I wanted to go back to uh, just take a quick look at uh, uh, Click here when we come back. And uh, we're, you know, we I think we talked about this last Friday that these things have been cha yeah, challenging highs on lighter volume, Click and Clack. We're kind of keeping an eye on them. Uh, this is one that uh, really looking at 1272 on the last major high uh, on May 12th. Uh, we've been kind of sitting around just underneath that. Uh, today, though, we're coming through with about 800,000 shares. A uh, third of a volume seems like it's uh, going to be awful tough on a Friday uh, to keep that up into next week. Uh, fun buying, though, for a few days. Uh, but keep an eye on these. If they don't get volume within the next couple of days, uh, look for these things to pull and start pulling back in to uh, the uh, trading range on these. Um, and uh, certainly, you know, it's not one you want to short out here, but there are some others in that sector you might want to be looking at if uh, these continue to have very light volumes up at their tops. I see Tom O'Brien in the bullpen getting ready for the show tonight. Uh, he'll be starting in just a few minutes, about uh, six, seven minutes. He'll be doing the wrap-up. I'll be back in about an hour and 20 minutes for the uh, Tech Insider. And uh, you all have a great and wonderful weekend if you can't hang around for that. But, of course, uh, we're always on 24 Four seven on TFNN. You can always catch it on the repeat. And uh, we'll see him coming in in just a few minutes. You all have a great and safe day.